Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things tech and finance and in this video I will be going over the theory and applications of K-Nearest Neighbors. K-Nearest Neighbors is essentially a supervised learning algorithm where you are trying to find relationships between different data points, K data points to be exact, based on the distance between each other. Make sure not to confuse this with k-means clustering, which is an unsupervised learning method. And if you haven't checked it out already, I did a video on k-means clustering, so do make sure to check that out. Now let's go ahead and jump to the theory. In general, there are essentially three large steps that are involved with k-nns. First, you wanna choose the k number of data points to choose from, where k represents the number of nearest neighbors that are closest to a given observation. Now, how can you find a good starting place for the k value? Well, you can always just do a square root of the number of observations that you currently have in your data set. And do keep in mind that k should in general be odd since the algorithm might confuse even numbers of classes. There isn't a structured method on picking the best value of k, but you can always parameterize this term using a grid search algorithm or where you just have an array and your array consists of k values where k can be two, three, four, etc. You can choose an arbitrary value and just go from there. Also, you can choose to do cross-validation on your data to have a more robust model. Some things to note about k. Uh, let's say that k is equal to one. Now, this will actually more or less underrepresent your data since all new data that will be added to your model will vary very widely, and this is no good. Also, you want to take into consideration that very large values of K will be very computationally expensive and it also may overfit your data because you are calculating all of the relationships inside of your data set. The second step is that assuming that you know what your k value is, you then want to get to choose what distance metric or what distance algorithm you will use on your data. In many popular packages, the distance formula is often the Euclidean distance. However, you can change this parameter to other distance formulas such as Manhattan's distance, Minkowski's distance, or the cosine similarity. It really just depends on what type of data you have. The last step of the algorithm is that once your algorithm has computed the given distance values based on whatever distance algorithm that you have, the data point will then be assigned to whichever group has the most amount of neighbors within the vicinity. So this is where the idea of, the, of an odd number comes into play so that there is a distinct class to choose from for the data point to be assigned to a given area. Like I did in my previous videos, I'll be doing a live coding demonstration or somewhat of a live coding demonstration uh, that implements the K nearest neighbors and what we have just learned. I'm using the Iris data set, a very popular machine learning algorithm for the a machine learning data set for classification type algorithms. And let me actually associate this species to a variable. So assign that, I'm gonna be assigning my row labels over here. The row labels are the Satosas, the Versicolors, and the Virginicas, uh, just because I'm going to be converting the, uh, the factor, the species into a factor. Here it is. I just associated the numeric into the species, I just made everything in here a species value. And so the data itself has been converted to one, twos, and three. It's just for uh, the algorithm to run its course. Since we'll be working with KNN, we are going to be working with distance algorithms, and we want to make sure that our distances between each of our observations are as small as possible in order to convert everything into a specific value just more uh, quickly. And in order to do this, we just assign data uh, the first four observations, not first four observations, but the very first four columns. We, can, we want to scale this value over here one to four and that is our scaled observations now we want to set the seed set seed for splitting data uh, we want this to be an 80 20 sets 80 percent 20 
AD20 where AD is the training and 20 is the testing. That should be a lowercase over here. So let's set seed. Set that seed to like one, two, three or something like that. So in a typical data science fashion, I essentially just calculate the size on what the total training set is going to look like, however many observations will exist. These are going to be the train indices. These are just going to get the randomized row numbers that will exist in our training set. This is going to be our training labels, and this is going to be our testing labels over here. And this is essentially just getting specific values for the end game in order to uh, evaluate our model. And this is actually going to be used for our training model. But we are going to be having our training data over here and our testing data. We have 30 observations. We have 120 observations for our training and 30 observations for our testing over here and take a look at that. It's just all split up. Notice that the row indices are not sequential. This is actually a good thing since our randomized function works just based on the randomized indices that we calculated here. Now let's go ahead and start calculating how our model is going to run. Model run. We are going to be importing a package just called the class package. This is a very popular package to use for KNNs. In fact, it's actually the very first thing that popped up when I was looking at what to use in order to run such a unique function that we have going on over here. And we are going to have our KNNs over here. The KNN function actually outputs its given prediction. There's going to be three important parameters uh, for our train. This is our first parameter. It's going to be our data train. There is one underscore here. And we can have a testing set, which is just data test. Data test. And we are going to have a sub K value, which is going to be to a round uh, square root number of rows of our data train over here. And this is going to be 11, I believe. Uh, it's going to be 11, yeah, which is fine. Make sure that your K value is an odd number uh, in order of allowing the algorithm to distinguish between uh, multiple classes and which type of value the uh, observation should go to. It makes it a little bit easier to distinguish. So once we have that, let us run. Oh, oops, I forgot the one of the more important values. Well, we want a class, which determines which of our observations are actually going to be true values. And I can run the question mark KNN. Here it is. Yes, yeah, a factor of true classifications over here, which are associated with our training matrix. So let's run that. We got our predictions. Now let's actually focus. Let us focus on the subject of plotting. So plotting our values over here. So over here, I'm just going to be uh, combining everything into one data frame, just all of our test values. And I'm going to be calling it like plot predictions. And this is just going to be like a data frame of all of our testing observations. So let me do that. So over here, I just essentially just obtained all of the testing data that I conveniently separated. Uh, these are the four features that I'm working with and we have our predictions over here. And I just go, went ahead and renamed uh, the column names and this is what we are working with. We have 30 observations and these are our given data that will be plotted. Let us plot our data. So there are two libraries I will be using over here. It's going to be the famous ggplot2, and we are going to be using a grid extra, grid extra, so that we can plot multiple plots on one grid. Our first plot is going to be associated with our uh, set ball length and set ball width, which is going to be the x and y. So we're just going to be doing a ggplot2, or just ggplot. Our data is plot predictions. And then we are going to be predicting or utilizing the uh, sepal length, sepal width, colors equal to predicted, and fill is equal to predicted. So let us actually make this more readable on each individual line over here. And I am going to be making this plot a little bit more pretty where we have 
and then we could be assigning the labels so that instead of GM text, instead of points, we're gonna have text. And I think it just be AES, where our label is equal to, should be our test labels over here, right there. And then we are just gonna be adjusting. H just is equal to like one, and then V just is equal to two, which is just adjusting the vertical and horizontal axes. And then I'm gonna be centering, or I'm gonna be having a title. So I went ahead and I just skipped the mundane parts and let us actually plot it. This is our plot that we have going on over here. And as you can see, it's sort of, um, sort of confusing. Uh, to look at, but as we can see here, the greens looks like they're supposed to be a versa color. However, there there is a misclassified color over here. It should be green instead of a blue, and it looks like everything else looks okay. Uh, let us actually plot the second plot, P2. Uh, we're just going to be copying and pasting this on over, and we are going to be using, instead of set ball length, we'll be using pedal length and pedal width. Pedal length and pedal width, and it's going to be the relationship between pedal length. Oh, over here, that should be a set ball. Set ball length and set ball width. There it is, yeah. Mix that up a little bit, but here is going to be the plot. Plot that. So this is the pedal length and pedal width, and that looks a lot more clean. So it really depends on what type of axes you'll be using in order to distinguish what type of groups we have going on over here. But it looks pretty good. Uh, we noticed that this versicolor observation here should be a versicolor, or, or it should be grouped up with the versicolors instead of the virginica. So that should be a green. But other than that, the toses are fine and virginicas are fine. And for the finale, let's plot everything together, where I just have the grid arrange, and I have P1, P2. P1, P2, number of columns, two. Right here, and zoom that in right here. And this is our plot. So this is my demonstration on KNNs. I hope that you guys enjoyed it, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching.